What does the research show on reverse osmosis versus gravity water filters? So the so it's not the research of the benefit like is one better than the other. The the challenge is now the following is convenience. So reverse osmosis, you know, it goes under usually the sink. And now uh, the problem with reverse osmosis moving forward in the future is that um, there's a waste of water with, with reverse osmosis. So, you know, as the water goes through these filters, which are fantastic, and then it goes through the membrane and stores into a tank, there's usually a, a loss ratio. And that's where the, 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 the reverse osmosis now is kind of being shied down upon. Because for every gallon of water that is purified, then there's a certain amount of gallons that is lost a one to three, one to four, one to five, depending on the brand. Okay. Now for the last 20, 30 years, nobody cared. Water wasn't a big deal. And you don't see it because it goes through the, it goes through the sink, you know, and so you're pouring it, you're getting the filtered water from the little nozzle in the sink and it's all filtering the body, but you're not seeing the water that's being wasted down the sink that is going out through the membrane or people go to the store. Hey, I go to the store and they're buying every, you know, they get the, the little blue jugs and they go to the, the health store, the grocery store, and they have that water store franchise things. You know, people are spending 39 cents, 49 cents, a gallon of filtered water, which is crazy. When you get a reverse osmosis or a gravity filter, it's about two to three cents per gallon when you actually uh, you know, kind of figure out the costing of it. And so anybody who's going to the store and paying for water, it's a huge ripoff. That's why stores and franchises are selling it because you're paying more money than gas, which is also expensive, uh, for water, right? But the challenge is saving water. So now they have what they call re uh, reverse osmosis that are tankless which have a lower ratio, but you're still losing like, a, you know, one to two gallons. So for every one gallon you, you, you filter, usually two gallons are wasted. Now, why that is still popular? Because it's easy. Plug it in, instant gratification. You turn it on, water's coming out of the filter. Fantastic. When people use gravity filters, for example, like a Berkey, I know there's other brands, but just like that, is that's gravity. So you have to put it in. It will filter out everything. Filters out, you know, sometimes even more chemicals sometimes. Uh, and, you know, they have an extensive list of taking out the PUFAs and the, and the, and the, some of the you know, prescription drugs and everything else like that. The problem is there's a wait time, right? So you have to fill the tank and then you got to let it gravity, you know, gravity and pull it out. Now, if you're not in a rush, then you do that. So like my house, I, I bought a house that came with reverse osmosis. So it's there. So I use that. But in our office, since we have more time, we use a gravity filter. Why? Because I'm trying to save water a little bit as I go, you know, over time. And we're all trying to be more sustainable. It's not like rip out everything and change it. But when you can, it's like, yeah. So some people are like, hey, it's just one or two people in the home and they don't mind, you know, reaching over and pouring the water in, in, in the tank and letting it gravity filter. That's fine. For like my parents who are a little bit older, that might be a little bit of a chore of putting the water and, fill, you know, changing it out. It might be easier getting a tankless one and kind of going that way. Either way, though. I always look at try to be sustainable when you can, but more importantly, filter out is super important because a lot of people, you know, if they can't buy organic, for example, as I mentioned yesterday, like how to look at environmental working group, like the dirty dozen and stuff like that, how to eat more organic, what, what you really should eat more organic, organic, everything if possible, but these are the ones that you, you need to pay for organic, but clean water is, is even more important because that's something that you're drinking, consuming larger amounts all the time that has other chemicals that are that are just as uh just as bad and high in concentration okay and you spoke a little bit about the carbon filters how i know so, so, yeah so carbon filters are going to be like a brita a pure most people who buy a refrigerator say in the last 10 years there's that little you know you know little filter that goes in the in, in inside or there's a little pipe that goes on the outside that people buy carbon filters. So carbon filters are great. They, they remove a lot of things. But when you go to the Environmental Working Group water database, you'll see that in each city, in each state, it, you know, I only had one patient this year uh, that had a, lived in a city that their carbon filter took out everything that they should. And I was like, congratulations, you don't have to do anything here. <laughs> Just make sure you change your filter. But now there's so many chemicals that it doesn't. So yeah, does it, is it going to take out like lead and mercury? Yeah, cadmium, yes. But with all these other chemicals, and now that we actually can test for those chemicals in the patient right now, right? Without a challenge, it's just a urine test. And also we're not doing any kind of chelating, you know, pre-test. We're just like, are you getting exposure? If you're testing positive for something and you do your water, you know, evaluation, and if you're still high in that, that means it's coming directly from that water source. And so improving that water technology instead of, filtration is key for their longevity because these are in you know people can be like oh i'm plant-based and exercise I'm, I'm doing yoga i pay my taxes go to church all this stuff and then you know why do i have this problem it's like because you're just drinking you know 60 80 ounces of water a day that has 20 30 chemicals which are all potential cancer carcinogens and all listed on that site so carbon filters are good and i think you know carbon filters you know 20 years ago was all we needed 
But now there's just more and more and more chemicals in our environment. So it's key to to make sure that you are getting clean water. And the, the challenge with the carbon filter is that everybody thinks that that clears everything because they think that that's the only problem. So it's just lead or mercury. Like we, we talk about five or six things, cadmium and all these things like that. And then now they look at, well, gosh, this is our water report. Now, the municipal water report will be give a report and they'll say the water is clean. That's different what the environmental working group will do. Environmental working group, they will look at all these other chemicals because your, your water shouldn't have the normal bacteria. So every water report from every municipal is going to be clean. They'll say, yeah, you don't have E. coli. Great. You're not going to get diarrhea illness from drinking out of the tap. But we're looking at removing all the other chemicals that are being in, uh, that are in the municipal water. That's just because we live in the, the world today. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm going to open up our next question to Dimple. Dimple, please state your name, where you're from, and ask your question. Hello, um, my name is Dimple. Um, I'm from the UK, Birmingham. Um, and I wanted to know um, what's the best sort of water to drink apart from Jiva, because I don't think it's that widely available in the UK. Um, we normally collect our water from Malvern Hills, which is like a stream, like a mountainous kind of hill um, where natural water is collected. Like we collect it every six weeks or so. And so we tend to boil that and drink that on a daily basis because the state's got so many minerals and stuff in it. So um, but I tried to stay away from tap water um, and tried to drink like spring water from Kirkland and Costco's as well, which is not the best because it's um, it's plastic bottles. So what would you suggest? Um, so it's a great, uh, nice story. and Nice meeting you, Dimple. Um, Thank you. Uh, Great that you have actually some natural source. So that's kind of like, wow, you live in a pretty cool place or near a cool place because you're getting actually some natural source. The key with the natural sources, and I don't know much about the UK in terms of its its environmental issues, but but I'll give you an example here in the United States. A study just came out a month ago, a month and a half ago, looking at the natural springs and rivers that are, you know, in the mountains. Like here in New Mexico, we have these wonderful yeah. mountains. And on the weekends, a lot of people go uh, fishing, for example, right? They, they go, you yeah. know, this just like natural things. Now I'm plant-based, so, but you know, that's just the thing that people do. And I understand that. I expect, I respect that. But, you know, they, they found out even freshwater fish and even river fish here in, in, and they checked like, you know, all these different rivers and springs all across America, even in our, in my city, right? And it found like even the fish had high toxicity of plastics and PUFAs. Right. So, mm -hmm. so we're like, how is this happening? Because it's like in the because it shows you like how much of like, unfortunately, industrial exposure of things that we're just sure. getting in the environment. Now, what I would do is if you're getting a spring like that, I would just make sure that it is tested just for contaminants. Right. So there's water testing that you can get or you can take the water and take it to a local shop. There's like usually water stores and stuff like that that will that will just analyze it and just see whether you have it. It won't be perfect. But, you know, as you're right, you're boiling it, which is important because you got to just make sure because it's fresh of bacteria and stuff like that. That. Um, and um, that's great. Keeping bottled water, I'm a, I'm totally against bottled water because just due to the plastic issue. Um, you know, the bottled water we now know that the water has been leaching on the plastic, so we get a lot of exposure for that. Heat makes that worse. So most of like here I'm in the southwest, so people go buy water bottled water. It's been in those cases and things. It's on a truck. It's coming through Arizona. It's in this, you know here in New Mexico. It's like 100 degrees in the, in the summertime. That plastic is leaching tons of plastic. And also we don't want people actually reusing the water bottles. A lot of patients come into my office who want to like kind of be conservative. They don't want to throw away, which is great. Like these are throwaway bottles. So uh, the problem is those are single use bottles and single use bottles actually leach more. So when people refill the, the, the single use bottle to kind of not want to throw it away, want to use it over and over, it leaches even more out. Now, so using glass or stainless steel, always important for just kind of storing or keeping water when you can. Now, life's not perfect, but that's what you want to do. Um, the other thing is um, the Jiva water device is shipped worldwide. So, you know, if you go, if you go to the website, you know, jivawater.com backslash rock doc, it, it ships from India. That, um, I think they can easily ship it to uh, England. And if you have any issues, just send me an email uh, to, uh, you know, wellness at sanjevany.net and that we can always contact uh, that. And you can also see, but um, I would definitely look at, you know, avoiding the tap water when you can or make sure that it is tested. But if you are drinking the, the spring or the mountain water, probably going to be less, is less toxic than most people's water. But it's always just good to check because where you live, you never know what's upstream. And so if it is good, 
even better. Congratulations. You're, you're closer to nature than most people. Uh, but I, you know, there's some simple ways to actually just have home tests or just go to certain places probably in the city and they can just test the water. If it's clean for most of the contaminants, then you're, you're, you're much good to go.